Open or closed? <laughs> Welcome back to the channel everybody. My name is Jason Rice and yeah, today we're going to have a little look at the two different sort of piping styles, uh, the open style and the closed style and what's the differences and why it's important and why you should know about it if you're trying to be a piper. Stay tuned if you want to have a little bit of a, a look into what the differences are between the two styles and uh, I'll give some examples and maybe some examples of some players and hopefully you can pick up something along the way that can help you be a better piper. Yeah, and it's actually really boiling warm here for a change in Cardiff, so in, in lieu of that I'm actually going to take the jumper off because kind of only did it for the sketch, so <laughs> alright. Uh, yeah, let's get stuck in. Let's have a little look at open versus closed piping, what it means to you and how it can improve your playing if you know a little bit more about it. Okay, so let's try and talk about things maybe more generically, the difference between the two different styles. Now, the Illum pipes evolved from the pastoral pipes and they had like a foot joint and they were played off the knee. Uh, with the Illum pipes you can pop the chanter on your knee and that forms a seal and then that also allows you to stop the air going through all the different notes and stopping the chanter is one of the only things that we can really do for sort of uh, different emphasis on different notes like if you think about like people who are playing the fiddle I'm eternally jealous of, of this sort of thing but you can blow uh, you can bow a bit gently or you can bow a bit harder and uh, it gives you like a different sort of dynamic we can't do that on the pipes. We have two settings, we have off and we have on. And this is where open and closed piping comes into effect. So essentially closed piping means that your fingers are, all, are covering all the holes more often and the opposite for open piping where your fingers are left off the chanter, off the holes more often. And that's kind of like a really generic way of doing it. Uh, there's some pipers who play like all open, there's some pipers who play like all closed, but you'll find the majority of pipers like to employ a little bit of difference in between the two. Um, and I'll just give you like a little quick example of what that sort of sounds like. So nice and open. And then with the little stops in between the notes. And that's like a very basic sort of generalization about the whole thing, but it sort of gives you an idea of the of the differences. Right, so what does that mean for your piping? You get a lot of people come into the instrument who uh, love the sound of it and they think it's it's wonderful, which it is, of course, we all know that. Uh, but if you come from like a different kind of background, maybe like a flute playing background or a whistle playing background, you might find the urge just to play the instrument the exact same way that you've always played your other instruments uh, and that's totally fine but you're you're leaving out a massive amount of the sort of tonal varieties and the colours and, and uh, that you can actually get with the Allen pipes by neglecting the the, clo the closed side of things. So like I said a lot of people have like a little mixture of the two sort of styles even if you really want to play open stuff like that's totally fine uh, but you'll find that most people who play like really open stuff will also throw in little little bits of uh, of the closed style as well. And when you're talking about open pipers, the big one that sort of comes to mind for a lot of people would be a piper like Paddy Keenan, a piper from the Bothy Band and various other uh, projects, a uh, fantastic solo player. Uh, and Paddy's style is like a big sort of in-your-face sort of uh, flowing sort of style. And that's maybe the kind of thing that you're, you, uh, the, maybe the word that I've described the open style as, you know, you're looking for flow. Uh, somebody wants to describe it to me as push as well. So like flow or push uh, in the notes in the way that you play the tunes. A lot of people like it, you know, and it, 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 if you like it, that's fine. If you don't, that's that's fine as well, you know. The, there's enough nuance in the different sort of styles of piping that you can get your own thing out of it. The great sort of granddaddy for open piping for me would definitely be Johnny Doran uh, and his brother Felix Doran as well, of, of course. Yeah, Johnny Doran had this 
uh, wonderful, like big flowing style. So yeah, if, they, if you think of the word flow, that's what you're going to get with that. Uh, and then there's a lot of other people as well, like I suppose like Leo Rosen would have been an open piper to, to, to some extent. Uh, and then there's more modern uh, pipers like Davy Spillane, Black O'Connell, Chris McMullen. Uh, so yeah, a lot of people out there who who have the sort of open style. And what you're thinking about there is like the push uh, or like the flow of the notes. And a lot of those players as well, they, they would do like, uh, you know, they'll throw in all the little tight stuff as well. But the for me, it's not really about opening and closing the chanter so much. It's more about the flow. And then when we think about the closed style, uh, it's sometimes referred to as like tight piping. Uh, or staccato, you know, there tends to be a lot of like triplets in it. Yeah, so when I think about closed style, I'm thinking rhythm, rhythmic, rhythmic, little rhythmic tricks that allow the tune just to sort of flow in a slightly different way, you know, in a more sort of stop starty kind of way. So you're putting emphasis on certain phrases or certain notes or whatever. And there's some really nice examples of, of, of tight pipers as well. A lot of people would say someone like Seamus Ennis or Tommy Reck. Uh, Certainly, Limo Flynn's piping would be a really good example of it. Uh, Robbie Hannon and maybe some like more modern players like Mickey Smith uh, would be a really good example uh, of, a, of a tight piper. Uh, older pipers, maybe someone like Patsy Tui with a lot of like, little pippity poppity bits in there. Uh, and of course, the, the uh, again, the sort of the, the great granddad of, uh, of clothes piping would be someone like Andy Conroy. Um, who uh, would play a lot of like little triplets and things and uh, famously quoted for saying that uh, the chanter would be better off if it didn't have any holes at all. <laughs> Just on top of that, maybe I'll give you some examples of, of little tricks that you can do, bring into your own piping with both the open and the closed styles. Yeah, with the open style, there's a lot of little tricks that, that, that you might hear it's not about playing fast or going going pedal to the metal. It's more about uh, creating like opportunities in between the notes with like little cuts and stuff like that, and rather than like actually stopping the chanter. And you'll find uh, an example I was showing to one of my students recently with like someone like Paddy Keenan is the way that he would split the notes like in half instead of doing like um instead of doing like a little triplet or like a little roll or whatever um so you know uh just an example would be something like the kid on the mountain you know where you go like uh so like that longer g dun, 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 uh yeah, the longer G, uh, you, to, to, to keep the flow going with that one, uh, Keenan would like split that note and with, with a cut. Um, so if you do something like, something like that instead. Yeah, so you hear the difference? So rather than having like the we're going so it's keeping it's keeping it going, but it's in a way that's sort of like separating the notes out. So it sounds like there's more notes, but there's actually not. It's just um, it's the same amount, it's the same rhythm, the same time and everything, but just the notes have been like sort of separate like that there, and uh, you know the same maybe in the second part. So that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea with that one. Yeah, so again, it's more like how the notes sort of flow from one into the other uh, and using little tricks like like sort of separating out the notes like that. One of the things that a lot of people talk about with regards to like open piping is like the legato runs. So these are big like runs of notes that sort of go from one into the other. And I talked a little bit about it in one of my earlier videos and I mentioned like sort of um, Johnny Doran and his like fantastic runs on like uh, at the start of, um, at least I think I talked about it, I should have, uh, I hope I have, uh, like the start of Colonel Fraser. Yeah, 
you know so playing that like at speed you get So over here, yeah, and the, maybe the more traditional way of playing it would be like nice and tighter. So there, yeah, you can hear the difference, sort of the tight, uh, or maybe the standard way of doing it, and then the version of it that has the big legato runs. Uh, and there's another really lovely version that of. Um, uh, of the sweeps hornpipe um, that, uh, that Johnny Dorn does as well, and the third part of it goes. And the, the Dorn version of it has these little. And another little trick that you can do that's kind of exclusive to the to the open style is the multiple rolls. And this is something that Giant Doran does, uh, and also something you hear in the piping of of Willie Clancy. You know, like the um, so what you would do not like a normal roll, you would do. So we're like chaining rolls and rolls and rolls together like that to give you like a bit more sort of flow. It also seems with like with the with the open stuff if you think of something like Davies Plan or uh, or whatever uh, they tend to do a lot more like sort of slides in between notes so you're getting like a bit of uh, um, a little bit of a uh, yeah like the notes they sort of merge from one into the other you know. Yeah, just just like sliding your fingers across to go from one note to the other. <laughs> Making use of all the sort of like weird like sort of half accidentals and stuff, you know, just like pushing in between notes and, stuff and things like that. Uh, that tends to be another thing that you hear a lot of open pipers doing. And with the open style, there tends to be a lot more things that you wouldn't necessarily expect to hear, like the taking a lot more risks on going off the rails of a tune and playing around the melody rather than actually playing like the normal sort of uh, what you would normally expect the melody to be, you know, like throwing in lots of like weird like upper octave stuff or you know crazy notes or just yeah, like I said, going off the rails a wee bit, you know. You know, more of that sort of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, use it, use it, uh, use it wisely. <laughs> so like a sort of overall, like in conclusion, like the open style, you're looking at more sort of risk taking, more sort of uh, wild sort of crazy notes little techniques like multiple rolls to keep the push going to keep the flow going and then also like adding in little like instead of like playing longer notes or whatever you're playing uh the long note but you're cutting it in between so just to keep that keep the bounce going there's like little to no chanter stops in between notes like compared compared to like like a, a closed style uh but yeah so and like I said, there's there's lots of uh, people who play like on an open wild style, but will also throw in all the little sort of uh, little tight uh, techniques as well, uh, which we will have a look at now. The 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 tight piping, closed piping, staccato piping, uh, however you want to call it, 
it's sort of yeah for me it's it's more of a rhythmic rhythmic thing so you you're you're using the the silence in between the notes to create like little rhythmic uh little bumps bumps in the road to help sort of break up the the rhythm of the tune because at the end of the day it's dance music and this is the kind of thing that you would have uh, heard like a dance really you know that sort of thing i won't go into it in too much detail today because there's actually a million things that you can do but essentially it is, all it is is you're stopping the chanter in between notes and the most common ones of these are like little triplets staccato triplets uh so you've got stuff like um uh like this is just like uh maybe the most common one it's called an ACA triplet or a c sharp a triplet really um so you open one finger for the a and then stop in the chanter open another finger for the c stop in the chanter and then go back to the a when you get like this kind of sound and as you do it with a bit of speed it becomes like this kind of like weird blip, blip, blip. Uh, so, so it doesn't actually have to like register as like a, like a, a note or anything. It's just like a little a little rhythmic device to help the tune bounce along. And a really nice example of that one maybe is like Seamus Ennis is playing of uh, of the box of arm more. Like you know you would play. And what Mr. Ennis would do is he would throw like a little little staccato triplet in there. So that's like a nice example of like stopping the chanter uh, for certain notes. Uh, and again, it's the kind of thing you'll hear like a lot of open pipers playing, but uh, yeah. And another one that I sort of snuck in there is like a G F sharp E triplet. So, so playing the notes, stopping the chanter uh, each time. And I'm just using like one finger for the G because it doesn't really have to be massively in tune because it's, it's just a little rhythmic device. And And that's sort of what you'd expect, like the sort of the, the, the closed style to sound like, you know, lots of little Maybe like one of the things I talked about in the last video, the Tommy Wreck thing. So like stopping it in between those, between the A and the F row. Yeah, so again, just stop the chanter in between notes to give you that kind of like rhythm, you know, like. You know, instead of the, maybe a more open style would be. Uh, and yeah, and it, it changes from tune to tune, like, you know, depending on, on the rhythm and the bounce that you wanted to get across in the tune. But yeah, just sort of stopping the chanter, using those little triplets in there. Uh, yeah, it's a, it, it sort of makes the tune bounce along in a slightly different kind of way, rather than just bouncing along in a slightly different kind of way with the, with the push or the flow of the open piping. And I think what I'll try and do now is maybe play a tune, uh, maybe I'll try and play a tune in the open style, and then I'll try and play it in a, and a closed style, just so you've got like the two different styles to compare and you can make your own mind up, whatever you like better, and then that can hopefully help you become a better piper. Radio, let's give this one a go. This is this is just Gareth Barry's jig. Uh, it's for a lot of pipers, uh, it'd be maybe one of the first or whatever odd tunes that you would learn. It's a piping standard um, and I'll give it a go both ways around. Uh, just So this is like a, a Gareth Barry's with uh, with a, an open style.
So hopefully you noticed like a few little little bits and pieces in there that I was talking about. And let's have the same tune, but just like in a more in a more tight, closed style. So keep keep your ears peeled for some triplets and stopping of the chanter and stuff in this. Same tune, two ways around. One's a bit open, one's a bit closed. Whichever one you liked. Um, oh, maybe if you've got any, maybe for the engagement, you could put in the comments which was the better version. Yeah, uh, which did you prefer? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, nice little rundown. Um, like a cursory sort of not too deep dive into the difference between sort of open piping and closed piping. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun actually to go through. Um, yeah, and like I uh, usually say at the end of these sort of videos, if you enjoyed yourself, you know, please go on, hit the like button, hit subscribe, leave me a message. Uh, it all helps out with the engagement, the YouTube algorithm overlords. <laughs> all right, uh, yeah. Happy piping everyone and uh, I'll see you all again soon for another, another little video. Alright, cheerio. Cheerio bye.